Good evening and Happy New Year. Tonight we have for you another ghost story. The voice of Twelve Chimes, Josh Horowitz, has written a new play as well as doing all the editing and sound design. It's a tough thing for me to hand over the reins, even occasionally, but I am so happy with the resulting episode and couldn't be more thrilled to have a new play to present to you. And a quick shout out to our fabulous podcast friends at The Mysterious Old Radio Listening Society, Breaking Walls, the podcast on the history of American radio broadcasting, The Gray Area, and the Narada Radio Company. And please stick around at the end to hear a few words from our new friend at Horror Shop Radio. Are you settled in? Are the lights off? I'm now handing things over to Josh to introduce tonight's play. Twelve Chimes It's midnight. At midnight, anything can happen. Do you remember a time when wars were cold and people fought them in the shadows? It was a time of spies and secrets, with each side trying to outdo the other, using any means necessary. Join us now as we drop in on a highly classified meeting at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., where even the uncanny is not off the table. In the play, Spooky. You got over? Got over. Tagda nachni misyu. In is a boot code, go as a boy, activati. Whiskey. Tango, Foxtrot, Osim Adin Divit. Tatavari, Zamatushku Radiu, is a partiu. I, uh, I didn't catch much of that. Uh, my uh, Russian's a little rusty. Uh, but the boys over at Langley seem to think it was pretty important, though. It is, Colonel. That's why we brought over Special Agents Lansing and Meadows here to brief you on the matter. Morning, Colonel. Morning, Colonel. Ah, Agent Lansing, Agent Meadows. No need to stand there. Uh, Please sit down. Now, will someone tell me what all this is about? Colonel Sweeney, our operatives near Smolensk were able to acquire the magnetic tape recordings you just heard about two weeks ago. The agency has high confidence that the Russians have established a new and dangerous espionage program. Well, surely a Russian spy program's nothing new. I mean, we've been spying on each other for decades. Yes, sir. But we believe that this is no ordinary program. I'm listening. The voice you just heard on the recording relayed a highly sensitive access code. Nobody outside of the president's inner circle should have known about it. Are you suggesting we have a leak inside Jack's office? It's unlikely, sir. Everyone on the staff has been closely vetted, and the Oval Office is constantly scrubbed for bugs and other listening devices. (laughs) Then what is it? I mean, how, how could they have known this access code? We're still trying to figure that out, sir. Colonel Sweeney, we have another audio recording we'd like you to hear from our mole inside the KGB. More Russian? Well, go ahead and play it, Agent Meadows. Yes, sir. This one has some translation added to it. It features our KGB mole, Vasimovna, talking to a KGB scientist. Привет, доктор. Спасибо, что пришли так быстро. The Kremlin appreciates your service. Of course, comrade Vasimovna. Tell me, doctor, how is the subject doing? Oh, she shows great abilities in biological communication. The subject should be able to read the minds of others with ease. And what about this experiment? Why do you have a locked safe on the table? Oh, we are testing if the subject is able to read the documents inside the locked safe using her special abilities. The document's title inside the locked safe is Top secret codes. Very good, Katya. Very good. 
special abilities. Uh, is this some kind of a joke? No, sir. You're aware that the Soviets have been trying for many years to find advances in various fields of science and technology. Weapons, rocketry, codes. Yes, yes, I read the papers too. I thought we were winning the space race. But they didn't stop there, Colonel. The Russians have also been interested in the metaphysical. Uh, You don't say. Yes, sir. This recording is proof that the KGB has been participating in various parapsychological studies. What kind of studies? Experiments in extrasensory perception and telepathy. They call it Biologie Cheskaya Svaz, biological communication. Originally, the Russians were looking for a way to let their submarines communicate with the shore without electronics. So so the the Russians are steadying up on strange stuff. What's the big deal? The, The Nazis were into that too. The idea, Colonel, was that during a nuclear war, telepathic communication would bypass any radio interference due to electromagnetic pulse emissions from a nuclear blast. We're investigating the possibility that the Russians have made a breakthrough in this field and may be using spies with biocommunication to infiltrate the highest levels of our government. Are you serious? Uh, Psychic spies? Well, not exactly psychic. But, 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 agents, this has all been very entertaining. I mean, hell, you may even be on to something. But I can't start alarming the president with a bunch of Russian hocus-pocus. I need real proof. Pronto. You wanted to see us, Director Cartwright? Yes, Agent Meadows, Agent Lansing. Please shut the door. I just got a phone call from the Pentagon about you two. Director Cartwright, I can explain. No need, Agent Lansing. I know about the work you and Agent Meadows are doing in the Soviet biocom channels. Any leads so far into our mysterious spies? Not yet, sir. But we're beginning to think it may be more than just agents with telepathic abilities. Well, I might have something for you. Take a look at this. These photographs are part of a batch of new intelligence that may be related to your investigation. This looks like it was taken at the National Mall here in Washington. Yeah, well, see that man over there sitting at the bench having lunch? That's one of our failed agents. He was supposed to do a routine exchange with our mall in the KGB. Yes, that's Vasimovna. The mole we heard on the tape yesterday talking about the biocom experiments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now look at this photo. That's Fasimovna next to the agent. Now, what's that behind them? Looks like a blur. An error from when the film was developed? (sighs) No. We had this picture developed several times and it shows up in each one. Hmm. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Well, listen, I have a meeting in a few minutes. I need you two to work on this photo and draft me a report with your conclusions by the end of the day. Yes, sir. I'm not sure what we'll find, but uh, come on, Trish. I don't know, Trish. I can't make anything out of this. We've got to find something, Bill. Our country's security may be riding on this. I know. We'll figure something out. Let's put this aside for now. What else are you working on? Well, we got this package back from the lab. Seems to be some new technology found from our group in Roswell, New Mexico. Team at Area 51, the extraterrestrial division. That's the one. Let's take a look. What is it? Hmm. It looks like one of those stereoscopic Viewmaster toys that lets you see slides in 3D. What is this, a power switch? What are you seeing here? Wow. This is incredible. Take a look, Bill. That is strange. Everything seems to have a glowing sheen around it. What's this device supposed to do? Apparently the lab believes it's a dimensional shift phase viewer. It was found in the wreckage of the crash site at Area 51. Dimensional shift phase viewer. Not sure what that means. (laughs) Looks neat, though. Kind of reminds me of the time the agency had us do that experimental analysis of uh, some LSD samples. From the special activity section? Ugh, don't remind me, Bill. I still get the occasional flashbacks. Wait a minute. What's the... Trish, come look at this. What is it? Here, try focusing on that photograph of Asimovna on the desk. Well, it's glowing, like everything else. But I don't see anything different. Look closely at the blur next to her. Try turning the adjustment knob if you don't see it. 
wait, the blur, it's, it's changing. Is that a woman? You can see right through her, almost like she's... A ghost. Right, a ghost. Bill, the biological communication, the ESP and telepathy. What if the subjects of the Russian studies can do this because they're... Dead. My God, is that how the Russians are doing it? Are there spooks actual ghosts? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Gus, you really know how to pick them. You like it? You know, not everybody gets a chance to sleep here at the Watergate Hotel. The decor, the stereo, even these silk sheets. Gus, how many strings did you have to pull to get this? Well, let's just say that being an agent for Central Intelligence has its privileges. Oh? Well, <laughs> that and the Watergate's management didn't want to be investigated for harboring possible communist sympathizers. <laughs> really? Gus, are you abusing your power? You know it, baby. Turns me on, you know. Pour me another glass, will you? You got it. Patty, you're really quite something. You too, lover boy. Hey, Gus. Yeah, babe? I was thinking. Oh, now that's a dangerous habit. Maybe it's time we stop making this a secret. I don't know, Patty. I mean... Secrets are my forte. <laughs> Come on, admit it. Your marriage with Diane has been on the rocks for years. We're an item, Gus, you and me. Isn't it time we made it official? You, you mean finally leave Diane? Then we can be together forever. Uh, I, I don't know, Patty. I mean, it, it's a pretty big step. Hey, you're, you're a great gal and all, but... Hey, you, oh. Hey, is it is it getting a little uh, warm in here? Let me open the window. Oh, oh my head! I'm feeling dizzy all of a sudden. Ugh, Gus, I'm feeling it too. The room is spinning. Gus, what's going on? Wait a minute. Something's not right here. There's some residue. In the glasses. The wine. Damn it. I was too careless. Oh, someone's gone through my field kit on the dresser. It's open. They must have found the poison pills. Oh, in the compartment. Oh, I've got to find the antidote before, uh, before it's too late. Oh. Someone poisoned our drinks? No, it's, it, it's not in here. Uh, maybe, maybe it's in the drawers. Oh, maybe. Oh, oh Gus, Gus. <laughs> Room service. Oh, uh, looks like the door's open. Here's your dinner, sir. Wait. Sir? Are you okay? Oh! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Colonel Sweeney, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Your meeting. Uh, Deputy Director Cartwright is on his way up. Yeah, very good, Lieutenant. Just let him in when he arrives. Yes, sir. Please continue, Agent Meadows. You were mentioning you had proof about the Russian agents? Yes, Colonel. If you'll please take a look through this device. Well, I'll be damned. Is that... No, it can't be. What the hell is this? This device is able to detect latent paranormal signatures and images. 
We believe what you're seeing is an apparitional field agent, the same one from that recording you heard earlier. Apparitional field agents? Look, how long do you estimate their programs have been active? We don't know for sure, Colonel, but we think at least a year. A year? Are you telling me that the Soviets have been sending out their ghost spies for- Apparitional field agents are more accurate, sir. Oh, shut up, Lansing. God damn apparitional field agents. These aren't just any spies, Colonel. We believe that they're real spooks. Paranormal entities, able to bypass our normal security measures via dimensional shift phasing, which we previously couldn't detect. So, we may have a bunch of damn Ruskies right here, floating through the walls and listening to my secretary by the water cooler talk about her weekend bridge club, or even spying on Jack in the Oval Office? Well, not exactly. Agent Meadows and I have been tracking this Russian spook program for over a year now, and there's no indication that their program has more than a handful of recruits. Recruits? From what we've been able to piece together from wiretaps and shredded documents, only a small number of what we now suspect are expired operatives are able to even qualify for their program. We've also learned that even the cause of death can ruin a candidate. Agent Meadows, Agent Lansing, sorry I'm late. Good morning, Colonel. Well, it's about damn time you showed up, Mr. Deputy Director. Your agents were just filling me in on the spooky situation from our friends in Moscow. Good, so you've heard the tapes? Yes, and I looked through that crazy doohickey of yours. What do you propose we do about these Russian ghosts? Colonel, it's clear that we have a spook gap with the Soviets. You're damn right we do. We need to match the Russian spook for spook with our own program right away. Absolutely. Agent Meadows and Lansing, how soon can you have something in place? Uh, that's the problem, sir. What's that? It may take us at least a year to find appropriate apparitional agents to train. No, 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 no. That will not do. The president expects results right away. Uh, Director Cartwright, we need something now. Colonel, I think Agent Meadows is a bit conservative in her estimates. I'm sure we can get something up and running quickly. What? Sir, you know that's not true. Given a generous amount of funding... Don't you worry about that, Director. There's a healthy budget for this, but we need to see results in three weeks for Jack's meeting with the National Security Council. Three weeks? But, Colonel, that's hardly enough time. We'll get right on it, Colonel. I'm sure our agents can get creative. Bill, there's no way we can get an apparitional recruit ready in time, and you know it. We have to, Trish. We just can't say no to funding on the scale. We've been waiting for this opportunity for years. But it's impossible. It would take at least a year to train a live agent, let alone a dead one. And let's not forget about a candidate's tendency to go rogue. (sighs) We'll just have to risk it. This is our big chance to get even with the Russians. But where are we supposed to find an available recruit? What are we going to do? Kill one of our agents? Well, uh... Oh, just a moment, Trish. Agent Lansing here. Yes. That's right. What? When did this happen? An hour ago. There still may be time. Make sure he isn't moved. Yes, thank you. You're not going to believe this. Do you know an agent, Gusterson? Gusterson? I think he's from the Office of Special Activities? Well, what about him? He was found dead in a hotel room at the Watergate about 30 minutes ago, along with a young lady. Oh, no. Either a double suicide or a double homicide. D.C. police are investigating. And get this, no bullet wounds. Probably poison. Poison? But that means... No bullet trauma to disqualify the recruit. We may have found our operative. Incredible. I'll grab the equipment. Where's the body? Here in D.C., Sibley Memorial. There's no time to lose. Quick, let's go. Well, agents, here's the receiving room. Let's see. We're looking for... Ah, yes. Agent Gustafson. 
classified as cyanide poisoning. We're scheduled to perform the autopsy later today. We'll just need a few minutes with the body. Fine, fine. Take your time. It's not like he's going to run off or anything. <laughs> Say, what's that strange contraption you have there? Uh, special diagnostic equipment, Doctor. Hmm. Looks like something for one of those sci-fi movies. <laughs> well, I'll just try not to disturb the body. Good thing I was able to secure this device from the lab. I owe Jenkins a Mars bar when we get back. Nice job. So what is it? It's from our ET group in Roswell. A dimensional shift communicator. Wow, sounds mysterious. What's it do? You'll see. Here, try turning the dial while I power it up. Steady, slowly adjust the frequencies. Hear that? I think it's Gusterson. Quick, put that switch to boost the signal. I've only got one shot of this. What's going on? Where am I? Bill, hand me the transmitter. Agent Gusterson! Agent Gusterson, can you hear me? Huh? What? Who are you? I'm Special Agent Patricia Meadows. I'm with Special Agent Bill Lansing. We need your help, Agent Gusterson. Gus. Everyone calls me Gus. Okay, Gus. How are you talking to me? I can't see you. We're communicating using a dimensional shift radio wave transmitter. We were able to reach you before you moved on. Moved on? What does that mean? You're dead, Gus. But that doesn't mean you still can't help us. Dead! So, I wasn't able to get to that antidote after all. I'm afraid not. But listen, we don't have much time. The agency needs your services, Gus. As does your country. Why should I help you? If I'm dead, it doesn't matter anymore. Just, Just leave me in peace. I'm going. No! No, you can't! Not when we're this close. Gus, you could be of great help to us. If you would be willing to assume an aboriginal form, your skills would surpass those of any normal spy. That's right! In your spirit form, you can travel almost anywhere instantaneously. Ah, uh, I've done enough traveling. But you could perform espionage at the highest level, completely undetected. So what? What's in it for me? If I'm dead, money and power don't mean a thing anymore. There's a woman. Oh? Yes. You would get a chance to interact with another apparitional agent, a female Soviet spy. Russian, huh? Is she too? Why don't you, uh, assume an apparitional form and we can, uh, show you what she looks like. How the hell am I supposed to do that? Just stay where you are, we'll get you. Preparing the dimensional portal. Whoa, 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 whoa what's going on? Now don't move. What do you mean, don't move? How can I move if I'm dead? Whoa! see you. And, whoa! I, I can fly around. I think it worked. Quick, grab the viewers. There. There he is. Floating in the corner. Uh, hey, hey doll face. You know, uh, you're, you're pretty, pretty cute, cute for an agent. Well, well. Welcome back to the world, Agent Gusterson. It's time to get to work. Well, Agents Meadows and Lansing, it's been three weeks and the National Security Council meets tomorrow. I'm anxious to hear your report on our spook in Moscow. Yes, sir. As you know, we had very little time to prepare, but we were fortunate enough to recruit an expired operative from within the agency. That's right, Gusterson. I heard his wife is a suspect for double homicide. We spent the last two weeks briefing our man on the situation and preparing him for his meeting with the Soviet spook. He was instructed to monitor and intercept her during the next drop-off in Washington. We just received surveillance tapes of the event. 
augmented with our new phase shift technology so you can hear the conversation between them. Okay, go ahead and play it. Nice day. Da, but I hear the weather is very muggy in Pittsburgh. You have the package? Da, I have package. Here, you will find reports from your moles based in KGB headquarters in Petrograd, Smolensk, and Kamchatka. A shame. So many traitors to the motherland. Well, my little double agent, I shall report you and your moles to Moscow at once. Going somewhere? What? Who is there? How can you see me? Well, well. You are cute for a Russian agent. <laughs> they weren't kidding. You are ghost too? Aha, uh -huh. I can see you now. So, you capitalists have learned to spy like us? That's right. The agency told me you were poking your nose where it didn't belong. You will not catch me, American pig. We'll see about that. Go away. Leave me alone. Oh, playing hard to get, huh? Что? What was that? The paper, you fool. Don't let them fly away. Where did wind come from? Something must be wrong. It's been compromised. I have all papers. Quick, burn them and leave. Stop chasing. Oh, I like you when you're angry. What? Got ah! So, now that you have caught me, what will you do? That depends. You know, it does not have to be this way. You could come with me, and we could work together. It's much more fun than being alone. Why still be loyal to your corrupt government? But the agency... Trust me, American. I make it worth your while. What is your name? Everyone calls me... called me... Gus. What a strong American name. I am Katya. I will show you how to have pleasure in our new form, Gus. Come with me. Whoops. I seem to have dropped my brazier. Lucky that only you can see. Well then, that is a nice set of tchotchkes. Well... Oh, what the hell? What? He defected? We were afraid of this, sir. Without adequate time for training, apparitional recruits have a tendency to go rogue. Where is he now? Satellite photos seem to indicate his phase shift signal is somewhere near the Kremlin. Do we have any way of tracking him? Yes, with this device, sir. We've been monitoring it throughout the day. I'll turn it on for you. Well, according to this, he's... Sweet Jesus, he's in Washington, in the Oval Office, with the President! That can't be! He's been in Moscow for the last few days. Looks like Kutch is there with him. I'll patch in their audio. Excellent, my love. You have led us to the American President's office. Neat place, huh? Never thought I'd get a chance to see Jack in person. It is not him we are interested in, remember? Right. The football. Oh no. Lansing? Is this conversation happening right now? Yes, sir. It's live. What's wrong? My god. The football! Football, sir? What does a football have to do with anything? It's a code word, you idiot! For the president's briefcase that contains the nuclear launch codes! Will you knuckleheads call the White House? Now! Wait! What now? I'm getting a third signal. A third? That's impossible. From where? Gus? Is that you? What the? Patty! Who is this Patty? Gus! I found you, Gus! At last! Now we can be together. Forever. <laughs> um, Patty, hey, Dollface, this is really not a good time. I knew that you would never leave your wife. When I poisoned both our glasses, that was the only way we would be together, even in death. You 
poisoned our glasses? Wait, who's that with you? Gus, have you found someone else? What about us? It was supposed to be you and me forever. Now, now, honey, I can explain. No, I sacrificed too much. My life, my place in the afterlife, all to be with you. And once again, you're leaving me for this, this floozy. Your Gus is mine now, and we have very important mission for Mother Russia to complete. No way, Ruski. If I can't go to the afterlife with Gus, then I'm taking all of you down with me. No! Let go of me! Do not take him! Ah! It is sucking us all inside! You're coming with me. President, I know that it looks like we, well, we just got a sudden breeze that blew all those papers around. I'll just close the window here. Wait, wait. That's odd. The window. It's already closed. Well, perhaps we can look into it. When I get back, I might try to catch it next week. What happened? Where are our spooks? Gone, sir. There's some interference, but I'm no longer getting a signal from Gusterson. Then it appears our secrets are safe, for now. Well, they'll have to be, because I'm canceling this program. Immediately. What? What? Budget cuts. We're going to have to shut this operation down now that we've lost contact with our spook. But sir, the Russians, the spook gap. Agent Lansing, none of this ever happened. Colonel Sweeney! Although it sounds like we owe a debt of gratitude to that dead woman, Patty, who would have thought that scorned love could have saved a country? But our work, Colonel. We can't just abandon it. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to, Agent Meadows. It's too much of an embarrassment to the government. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an important meeting to attend. Colonel! Colonel, come back! Come back, Colonel! Katya! Come in, Katya! Yes, Colonel? Well done on getting inside the Oval Office and avoiding that dimensional portal. I knew our plan to use the American spy to gain you access would work. I look forward to your report to pass on to the Kremlin. Spasibo, Polkovnik. Mladiec, Katya. Zamatushku Rasil. Is a part of you. Da, the Matuskuratiu is a part of you. Tonight's episode was written by Josh Horowitz and produced by Amy Pavi. Lead editor and sound designer was your friendly host, Josh Horowitz. Heard in tonight's play were Josh Horowitz as the KGB scientist and Spy 2, Lena Horowitz as Katya, Bob Telford as Colonel Sweeney, Michael Carnegie as the military aide, Brett Stillo as Agent Lansing, Audra Wolfman as Agent Meadows, Regina Yermus as Vasimovna, Ed Champion as Deputy Director Cartwright, Aaron Seymour as Agent Gusterson and the Doctor, Beth Damiano as Patty, Amy Pavi as the Room Service Lady, Landon Hood as Spy One, Dana Kelly Jr. as the President's Aide, and John F. Kennedy as the President, courtesy of NVIDIA's Natural TTS Synthesis and Tacotron 2. Music and sound effects from freesound.org. Additional music arranged and performed by Josh Horowitz. Episode cover art by Peter Weiberg from Pixabay. Logo design by Michael Dern. And yours truly, Josh Horowitz. If you enjoy our plays, 
please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts or drop us a line via email. The address is in the show notes. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening and uvidencia snova de polnoch or see you again at midnight. Attention shoppers. Have you come for something in particular or just browsing? We have a wide array of gardening supplies, a nice sharp pair of shears for your pruning needs. A good sturdy shovel is always useful to bury things. Something from our hardware department. Perhaps a new power tool. Or do you just need to pick up some groceries? Our deli counter has the freshest meats. Yes, we have all your essentials. If it's a bargain you're looking for, we're always slashing the prices. Come on in and peruse. Make yourself at home. And welcome to the Horror Shop. Season 2 is coming in 2022, featuring an all-new storefront with a shopkeeper and his new employees to guide you on your journey into the dark. With all new tales of torment to terrify you, disturb you, and unnerve you, the entire Season 1 is now available to satisfy all your horror cravings. Check out HorrorShopRadio.com or wherever you get your podcasts to listen.